Today we're here at Formnext 2023 in Frankfurt, Germany, and we're here with the founder or CEO of Bontec. Uh, this is Martin. Hello, I'm Martin Bondius, the CEO and founder of Bontech. So Bontech is named after kind of like your last name. Exactly. We are based in Sweden, quite a young company, started back in 2014, focusing mostly on getting the material feeding reliable, because that was a huge issue back then. So I started to work on a solution and I developed a dual drive system that is very common today. Yeah, I noticed that like pretty much every company that's going to copy someone ends up copying you guys because you've done it right from the beginning. Yeah. Now you've got a couple new variations on those LGX models that I guess we're going to take a look at yeah. today. So uh, here is the LGX Lite V2. It's the second generation of the LGX Lite. So what is what we have improved here is uh, we have reduced the number of components from four to two components. Uh, this makes it uh, much easier for the user to assemble to use because before it was maybe an issue with some people tightening the screws too hard. That created uh, too much friction. We also have a self-centering feature that centers the motor in the correct position that creates the correct backlash and the correct uh, position for the gear to work optimally. So it's a really lightweight, uh, small, compact server. We have a friend to the Lite V2. We call it LGX Lite Pro. So what's different here is that we have a full metal gear train, uh, really strong and uh, resistant. We have a two millimeter longer motor, so it's stronger. We also have a seven tooth motor gear. So this one actually provides as high uh, pushing force as a standard LGX, but in a smaller compact format. I noticed you 3D print a lot of your housing components, where most people would probably do injection molding. Yeah. So what kind of advantages do you get by sticking with a 3D printed manufacturing line? The main advantage here is that we skip the step with the mold, of course. Uh, the mold is really expensive. It takes three months to do. And once you, you have made it, you have more or less frozen the geometry. So this means if we need to tune and tweak something, it's really hard to do it in injection mode. It also takes a lot of time. So therefore we're using the SLS printing method and now we're using a nylon 12 with glass beads. So it's a really strong temperature resistant material and it allows us to continuously iterate and make improved products. I know that when you 3D print parts, they have a kind of a matte surface finish, which looks really nice, but it can cause issues with tolerances where, you know, that surface is a little bit bumpy. So what kind of post-processing do you have to do to clean that up? Post-processing the SLS product, we use a blasting, media blasting, of course, to remove the residual powder, but also the critical dimension, we machine it, we ream it, and to get it in spec. One thing I noticed about your company is you're, you seem to be a very creative guy. You're always pushing the envelope and uh, kind of advancing extruder technology. First with the BMG, you know, that really introduced uh, dual gear extrusion to the world and now everybody's using it. And after you released the LGX, I started noticing other manufacturers started increasing the diameter of their drive gears in a kind of an attempt to follow what you're doing. Yeah. One of the main advantages for you must be with a 3D printed manufacturing line, you know, if you come up with a new idea, you can put it into practice right away. That is one of the advantages. We can be really quick from when we design a product to have it out on the market. Okay, and then what do we have here? I was touching it. It feels like it's made out of aluminum. That is correct. This is just fresh from our machines. We are machining it in-house. So it's a full metal aluminum housing, all metal components inside. So it's a stronger solution for more demanding applications. Yeah, I imagine one of those applications will be high temperature printing. Exactly. Because, uh, you know, plastic housings don't do too well when you end up in the raising the chambers. Yeah. With your BMG extruder, there's a lot of clones out there that are basically just trying to copy your design. Why would someone be interested in buying your product over theirs when there's like a pretty substantial price difference? Uh, there is a price difference for reasons, I would say. Uh, of course, we need to uh, finance our development and our team. If you just skip that step and then copy our products, yeah, yeah, there we are. Yeah. You. But of course, we have a high quality. We are producing everything in Sweden in our own machining centers. The quality is a, kind of a big issue. I'm guilty of having bought a clone product myself and I'm never impressed with the quality that I get. They're like falling apart right away. So if you want like a big professional printer, you're definitely gonna wanna go with something that's built to a high standard. Exactly. The way that your tensioning mechanism works is I think really difficult to emulate because the amount of research and development and fine tuning and quality control 
has to be pretty high because these are very precise parts to get the detents to work correctly and set the correct levels of tension. That's correct. And uh, yeah, the big advantage with this one is because you can always reach the same tensioning points. It's repeatable. That is one of the issues with other systems that are on the market, like that we had on the BMG with the thumb screw. It's quite hard to fine tune to find the right setting. For sure, it requires precision to get these repeatable results. Also, the lever system and adjusting system is also patented. So that is one thing that we have patented with the LGX. I have a question that maybe your competitors would like to hear, but um, what do your competitors get wrong about extruder design? Certain other companies will make things that they tend to like screws get stripped or things kind of fall apart. Like, what's, is it the quality, is it the design, the materials? I think it's better for them to ask that question. Yeah, they need to ask themselves. Yes, okay. exactly. You've also brought some nozzles here today. There's some CHT nozzles, which are like one of my favorite upgrades, just because you can start with a printer that you already have, and for just $20, you can just swap in a new nozzle and increase your flow rates up to 50%. It's like a really good, uh, simple upgrade. But you've also got a bimetallic version here, it looks yes, like. Yes, that is uh, the bimetallic version for the abrasive materials. So it has a board in copper and inserts in hardened steel. So it can withstand uh, abrasive printing. These metal inserts are very small. They are. It's, uh, you must have some special equipment to be able to make stuff like that. We have. It's clear that you guys are kind of the thought leaders when it comes to new extruder designs. How do you keep coming up with these new ideas? We work together with the community, so we got a lot of influencers and a lot of guys in the community. But of course, we have also a creative team back home at the factory in our company. So that is what generates all these great ideas. Your products are used on a lot of printers, and I see you've got a, a, a bunch of them here today. You've invited like this whole conglomerate of Bontech users. So you've got this Modix printer over here. It's a very large one. Rat rig, which uh, it's always a fan favorite. Everybody loves the rat rigs. Yeah. Little spot. Got a little spot, yeah. yeah. And uh, there's a couple more over here that we'll be taking a look at later because we want to see how these extruders end up being used by real customers. That is true. We are uh, working with a lot of, uh, we call it OEM customers that use our products in their machines. As you're working by the show, you will probably see them in a lot of places. A lot of machines are using our feeders. One thing that I've noticed is that compared to the original BMG design, extruders haven't really got much more powerful or higher flow rate. It seems like things are just kind of shrinking and getting lighter weight and simpler rather than becoming like bigger and more powerful. Do you have any insight on why that is? Like, uh, is it just market demand or is there some kind of physical limitation? Regarding reducing the weight, smaller and more compact units, it's about the moving mass because in the printer you have the motion platform. You want to keep the moving mass as low as possible to get the good surface finish and to reach high print speeds without losing uh, surface finish. So that is one of the key things. And in terms of like increasing flow rate, is there some kind of, uh, like we're plateauing in terms of how fast you can push filament or maybe like the viscosity of the filament is kind of the limiting factor more so than the extruder system? Yeah, it's, uh, I think it's a combination like everything more or less in 3D printing trying to reach research, it's a combination of many different factors. Uh, material is one thing, there are some new materials coming out that uh, tends to be high flow and uh, probably they have a higher melt flow index so it flows more easily. So that is one of the reasons, but uh, there are also something uh, we are working on that might be interesting for the future. Okay, how long are we going to have to wait for those, uh, those future things? Sometime during next year. Okay, well we'll keep an eye out for that. One thing that I've always been curious about is the different filament diameters. So there's like 1.75 millimeters, which we're really used to in kind of the hobby 3D printer arena. But you've also got like 2.85 or 3 millimeter filament. Um, what's the difference in terms of your extruder designs for those different extrusion diameters? I would say uh, it was 3 mm from the beginning, back in 2012, 13, 14. And uh, then the 175 came afterwards. And uh, also the 3 mm went down to 285 and become the standard today. 285 filament makes sense in a uh, Bowden feed system but also feeding uh, flexible material because you have more material to grip onto. In terms of melt performance, uh, the 1.75 is a bit better because the ratio between the surface area and the volume is in a better spec than compared to 285. So. That's a 
remarkably simple answer to, to the question. I didn't think about flexibles because, you know, with flexible filaments that are small diameter, they're yeah. super wobbly, but if you thicken it up, then you'll be able to... More to grip it. onto. All right, well, thanks for showing us all the stuff you have coming out from uh, LGX and the new nozzles. You forgot the IKEA question. Yeah, yeah, do you want to talk about that? <laughs> no. uh, it's kind of a weird question, so I wasn't sure. <laughs> Doesn't matter, yeah. Okay. I like IKEA as well. Scandinavian design is like kind of a popular theme in furniture design and like uh, with practical tools. They tend to focus on simplicity and functionality. Do you think that that's kind of uh, something that you've internalized with your own designs? Yeah, I would say so because uh, when the product is ready and the design is ready, it looks really simple, but it's really hard way making it that simple. You can always make things really complex, but uh, keeping it simple is quite hard actually. And uh, I think uh, that is one of our advantages. Thanks Martin for your time today. Thanks Nathan. Have a good show. Okay, you too. Yeah, thank you.